The topics and opinions expressed on the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4WN Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4WN Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4WN Radio. Welcome to the Fine to Fab Show with Lisa Lieberman Wang, helping women reclaim their inner peace and power, going from feeling fine to being fab, fabulous, awesome, beautiful, serving to empower you to break through the barriers that weigh you down, to live an authentic life that is healthy, happy, and free. Now, here's Lisa. Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Lieberman Wang, your trusted guide on your journey from feeling fine to being fab. I am real excited that you're joining us here, and I just want to let you know this is part of an active community. We are not only on the radio, but we are on social media through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you can join me by finding at Lisa Lieberman Wang. And also, if you'd like to be able to text in and be updated on what's happening and specials and promotions, be sure to put in the keyword find to fab. And we'll be part of this incredible growing community to be fabulous. So I want you to know that you will be able to call in today and speak with our incredible guest by calling in 561-422-4365 or Skyping in at W4WN Radio. I am so excited because looking at me now, you'd never know I had a long history of depression, eating disorders, medical challenges, and countless hospitalizations. But I've spent an enormous time trying to figure out what's wrong with me, only to find out the answer that there was nothing wrong with me. And the truth is that our happiness comes from within. And with that being said, I was so excited to be able to introduce you to a special guest and friend, and I'm happy to call him a friend, and who is a number one best-selling author of the book Immediate Happiness. His name is Anil Gupta. He's an acclaimed international speaker, best-selling author, extraordinary extraordinary quote. He's dedicated his life to causing immediate change through his talks, DVDs, online videos, books, and, and of course, immediate happiness. He's, Anil has a gift that can remove any personal issue that has prevented you from true happiness and fulfillment in a matter of minutes. And it has to be experienced to be believed. And he invites you to listen to see how powerful the message is today. And also, you have that opportunity to be able to connect direct so share his knowledge for all the benefit and guarantees that you'll be happier and empowered during and after the interview. So I know you're there. Yeah, I'm here. And, uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. Oh, my pleasure. I, you know, it's so great just our time getting to know each other, but it was even better after reading your book and realizing more of where you came from and seeing where you are today. It would be something people would never believe as um, all of our stories are always kept in a closet. You know, as my mom says, I came out of mine, it looks like you did too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, to give people more of an idea where you're coming from, would you tell us a bit about your background so they can better understand um, you and some of the challenges you came to be where you are today? Sure. I, I, I qualified as a doctor of optometry in London. I practiced uh, optometry for 20 years. And then um, my wife uh, came uh, back from a seminar in uh, the U USA and said, we have to move, we have to move. And I said, I really don't want to because we were settled, we were comfortable. And, but she kept on insisting, and I, then I, I had to admit to her, I said, honey, look, I know we need to move, but I'm scared. She said, what are you scared of? Well, you know, it's uncertainty and all that stuff. She said, well, what's the right thing to do? And that got me because the right thing to do was to, to move. So we moved across here. We started from scratch. We built up a, a great business. And then, um, you know, the financial wall hit us in 2008 and we lost everything. And that's where uh, the real growth started in my life. So should, yeah, should I sometimes, sh it, It's sometimes when we hit a bottom is when we have the, the first distance to grow, right? That's right. And, you know, I, I was a know-it-all. I knew everything, and I knew everything about knowing everything. 
Well, and what were some of the things, like you say, the financial, were you still practicing the optometry or what was going on at that point when well, you no, moved and started over? To, to, to get a visa, we had to start up a new business or buy a business, and that's exactly what we did. And, and, and I, I, when I left uh, uh, London with the optometry, I knew that that wasn't my uh, uh, passion and mission in life, but I really didn't know what it was. But after 20 years, I, I really felt that there was something else. But I, did, I had no clue what it was. So we, we, we took that uh, break and we, we did very well. And then in 2008, in, in, uh, through stock market investments and real estate investments, I lost everything. Wow. So, so what, what was the starting point of what was when you say lost everything? Was your wife working? Were you both starting over? What was the reality? Well, you know, we, we, I, I, I stupidly, um, and I realize now, but at the time I didn't, I was gambling on the stock market. Um, I had a real estate business. Obviously, that collapsed because we were in Florida. That was, that was where the hotbed was. Um, all the college funds were, were depleted. All our savings were depleted. And I, I, I remember uh, being with uh, Tony Robbins, and he, he had to do an intervention on me. His wife did an intervention on me. His wife's brother did an intervention on me. Then my wife had a go. And, you know, I, I, I told her, honey, we've lost everything. And you know what she said to me? No, yeah, what did she say? She said, I'm glad you did. I thought, <laughs> I thought, honey, I know you love me. I know you care for me. I know that, you know, you'll do anything for me. But why would you say that? And she said, look, honey, you can't sleep. Every time you leave the house, I don't know if you're going to come back. I don't know if you're going to have a heart attack. You're a nervous wreck. Now you don't have to worry about that stuff. And I, and I said to her, you're right. I, I, you're right. I don't have to worry about that stuff. And then she said something else. She said, you made one big mistake. I thought, well, here we go. You know, she's going to come up with 10 years of pain and grief for me. She said, honey, you didn't lose everything. You still have us. You still have the kids. We will sleep and go anywhere you want us to go. And in that and instant... So, you know, and that's such an important thing because when you were saying you lost everything, and I asked why, it's because I know for a fact that, you know, I've been in a position where I said the same thing, but the reality is I still had a roof over my head and, and my... And I had my husband or whatever the case was, but in our mind, it feels like everything. That's right. And basically what she did was just turn my head towards what I had rather than turn my head towards what I didn't have. And that, that's a very powerful distinction. If you focus on what you have and not on what you don't have, that in itself can make a huge shift immediately. Absolutely. And, and how many people do the opposite? They only see what they don't have, and they don't even appreciate or value what they do at that moment. Yeah, uh, and it's so right. You know, a, a, a relative of mine recently just had an accident, and uh, it, it was avoidable, but it, he had the accident. And then you think, oh, my goodness, how would I react to that? How would I respond to that? Then I, then I, I put value on what I had. So really, if you focus on what you have, don't focus on what you don't have. That will immediately improve the way you look at things, and you'll feel more grateful. Once you feel more grateful, the inner, inner strength that you get from it is so powerful. Now, it sounds easy to get there now, but why don't you share? I know that you know there was a point where you were even suicidal, and you didn't just come with, okay, focus on this. You know, share what that meant in that time so we, we can help our listeners get a different perspective and better perspective of really where you came from. Yeah, you know, as an Indian, we've been brought up to be doctors from the age of one. So everything that we did was to study hard, study hard, study hard, and, you know, build up your wealth and be successful. And, and, and we, we did that from the age of one onwards. So everything that I did was towards working and, and creating uh, safety and security for the family. So, and, you know, I was fully trained as an optometrist. So when we came here, I couldn't fall back on that. I couldn't work the extra hours that I could have done previously. And I felt 
that I, I was a failure. I, 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 I let my parents down. I let my family down, that I shouldn't be here. I, I wouldn't eat with a knife just in case I had a moment of madness and stabbed myself. I wouldn't walk in the street just in case I felt like jumping in front of a, a, a truck. I wouldn't walk up some stairs just in case I just flung myself down. It was a totally painful, painful experience. One, one that, and, and to be honest, I was a coward. I was a coward to do that stuff. I, I thought, you know, you failed at your business. You'll probably fail at suicide too. <laughs> Sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> so and that, that well that actually I can I'm not, unfortunately can relate to that because I had points in my life where I had thought of that but my bigger fear was what if I didn't do it well and I ended up worse than I am I could be yeah. paralyzed <laughs> the things can happen that would not be cool you know yeah so and then, and then I would so. think oh if I make a mess you know my wife has got to clear it up and it's not fair on her you know well when you're in that state the most stupid things come in your head. Yeah, but it's actually the fact that it's, it's, I have been, I'm happy you said the stupid things come in your head. It doesn't make it stupid. It's just the thoughts are yeah. not necessarily serving at that moment and stuff like that. That's true. So, so what was, what was your turnaround? Was it the time with Tony? Was there a turnaround before that? Was it, what was it specifically? Well, it really, it was my wife because she gave me the confidence to, to move forward and she, and she didn't make me wrong. She didn't tell me off. She didn't shout at me. She didn't curse me. She didn't do any of that stuff. She just gave me more love. And that's the thing I needed. I, I needed to be felt that I, I was worthy. And that made me feel a lot worthier. So what were, once, you know, here you're, you're getting that and you have an incredible support system in your wife, what would you say are like three struggles, the challenges you faced along the way in finding these solutions and discovering this? Well, you know, I, I had all the knowledge. But, you know, no, people think knowledge is power, but it's not. Knowledge is powerless unless you implement. So that was an added frustration. But what, what, she, what my wife did and what Tony did was really just to change my focus. So focus on what I actually loved. And what I loved to do was to coach and talk to people. So that's what I started to do. I started to talk to people and coach them. And then once you help other people, the self-worth increases exponentially. You know, if, if, if there's any part of your life you're not happy with, just focus on serving other people. Once you serve other people, you get the benefit immediately. You know, I remember one of the stories in your book was about looking for your passport. And I thought it was such a great metaphor for how we're looking for the answers. Do you want to share that with everyone? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm always putting things down and losing them. And in this particular time, I had to get to the airport and I needed my passport and I couldn't find my passport. And I looked around everywhere. My wife wasn't here. My, my family weren't here. And then uh, we had a, 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 um, a blackout. So all the lights went out. And I thought, this is great. This is absolutely great. But I looked outside, but the street lights were on, so I thought, great. So I went outside looking for my street light. So I went outside to underneath the street light and started looking for my passport there. And I still couldn't find it. And a, and, and a neighbor came around. He said, Anil, what are you doing? He said, look, I'm looking for my passport. He said, well, oh, let me help you. He couldn't find it either. Then he asked me a great question. He said, Anil, where did you drop it? I said, well, I dropped it inside the house somewhere, and I, I really don't know where. And he said, well, look, if you dropped it inside the house, why are you looking out here? And I looked at him and I thought, isn't it obvious? The lighting is better. <laughs> but isn't that, isn't that what we do in life? We, we, we find that we think the solutions are on the outside, but the, really the solutions are always, always, always on the inside. So, so what do you feel you're looking for that you're missing? Obviously, we know the thing you wanted the most was love, but when you were doing all this with the career and trying to find every answer, what were you looking for at that time? Or what well, did you I, think you were looking for? Well, I, what I was doing, I was looking to please my wife uh, and make sure that she was looked after. And the, the amazing thing was she said this to me, Honey, that's not what I want. 
I've been working so hard for so many years thinking that's what she wanted. But she said, honey, the only thing I want is to have time with you. I want you to be present with me. Isn't it strange that we, I didn't have that knowledge just to ask her, honey, what is it you want? How can I serve you? And that, that's one of the, the things I talk about in my book is have that deep, authentic communication with your partner. What is it that will make it so juicy for them by you serving them? Just ask them, what is it I can do for you? Well, I think I think people stop communicating, so the questioning is is so valuable. Yeah, and the normal question is, what can I get out of this? But once you start asking, what can I do for you? How can I serve you? And both of you do it that way. You serve each other. You have the most beautiful, outrageous relationship that you could possibly have. And that's what happens when you date, isn't it? It is. I, 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 told my, I gave my husband simple rules. You had your rules. I told my husband, don't do anything for, with me for a day that you're not going to do for a lifetime. That was my only rule. So <laughs> don't, when you start like courting that. me and then you court me, you better be keeping giving me the same thing you gave me from the beginning or I'll get rid of you too. <laughs> that was what I told him. <laughs> yeah, it, it. That's so powerful. There's, there's a chapter in the book called The Dating Facade, and that's exactly it. The, the boy meets a girl, and the girl meets the boy. He acts to make her happy. She acts to make him happy. Then they get married. Then he doesn't have to act. She doesn't have to act. They both let their guard down, and then all of a sudden she says to him, hey, you're not the man I married. And, and he will say, you're not the woman I married. And that's how these issues arise. And the way you've done it is perfect, because what she sees, what you get. Absolutely. And I told him, I said, there's too many beautiful brides and ugly wives. I promise I won't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what you see is what you get. And, he, and he, my first meeting with him even was so funny, you know, because my husband met me in a class of learning about makeup, which I'm not really into, but I was learning about. And they said, show up with no makeup. So his first, his first time seeing me was totally... No cover-ups, nothing. And this man, he tells me his love at first sight. He just saw me and started panting, and, and that was it. So wow. I don't even know. He knows, he knows what he's going to wake up to, and he's happy. <laughs> 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 and, I'm, and totally, that was the last thing from my mind. So it, it, it was a match made in heaven here. So tell me, what were some of the stories you had to tell yourself to let go? What were some of the new stories you had to tell yourself? You know, it, 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 there's a number of things. Um, you know, letting go of the attachment to, to money. You know, um, a, a really beautiful thing happened to me. I was, I was just thinking about all the money I've lost, millions of dollars. And it, then I realized how to become a billionaire. And I, I'll share this with you. And listeners, please listen to this. You too can benefit. I stopped using U.S. dollars as my currency. I started using the currency of love, friendship, camaraderie, making a difference. And let me tell you, as soon as you make that distinction, as soon as you make that crossover, as soon as you jump and, and take that on, you feel differently. You feel richer spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Because you live in a world of abundance, and that abundance gets even deeper the more you give, the more you love, the more you forgive, the more you serve. It's the most beautiful, beautiful, and easy thing to do if you do it. So that means that give me, if I was to break that down to the simplistic and make sure I understand it as well because it's valuable, is that everybody is already rich if they have love and they can give love. Yeah, and that's our nature. Our nature is love. If you see a baby, a newborn baby, isn't it pure love? Everyone is raving about that baby and how beautiful it is and, and everything it does is so beautiful. And I've got a picture of a baby on my desktop. Every time I see it, it lights me up. I could easily put a smile on your face just thinking about one. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's it. And you know, the, the great thing is, I, I realized that we get to generate our own feelings, and it's a muscle. Once you once you build that muscle up, you can generate happiness, sadness, joy, freedom, anything you want because you have that power. You have that muscle. And you know, I, I know we have a lot of listeners that have gone through a lot of tra- challenges, uh, trials and tribulations, as well as different forms of self-sabotage. Why don't you work some of your magic and share some of the things that could be done to, you know, like the baby steps, like what would be step one, two, and three that they can start taking now to be able to see media changes? Okay. For, for the first thing is get a piece of paper Write down 10 things you can be grateful for. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be you're grateful for your nails, you're grateful for your fingers, you're grateful for your eyes, your nose, your teeth, your ears, your hair. You're grateful for having no hair so you don't have to worry about combing it. Once you focus on gratitude, you will feel differently. You will feel calmer, more peaceful, and richer, and and filled. Now, I was coaching one girl, and I said, look, can you write down one thing you're grateful for? She says, well, I I can't. I said, what do you mean you can't? She said, I've got nothing to be grateful for. Then I I explained to her, I said, look, it's not about the big stuff. It's about the little stuff. She came up with a list of 200 things, and you should have seen her face. It was glowing. That's the number one thing you can do right now, immediate impact, immediate happiness. Write down the things you're grateful for. And that's such a great exercise. And, you know, it's so funny how our paths have just crossed in the last year, but our journey has been the same because mine started over almost 30 years ago, but 20 years ago, um, because I've had the last 20 years of of abstinence from hurting myself, and yet some of the things I had to do at the very beginning was, and because I should back it up, because we both also had an association with Tony Robbins, but I was introduced to him back in 1993, 94, was starting with what am I grateful for, and at the very beginning, I remember how hard that was. That was the most difficult exercise, and I had to start with, I have two hands, two feet, two eyes, I can see, I can stand, I can walk. I mean, it had to start there at least somewhere, and sometimes we take all that for granted and, until you see someone who doesn't have it. Yeah, I mean, and it is a muscle. Imagine the water that we poop in, okay? People in Very Af- visual. <laughs> there are people in Africa who would love to drink that water because it's purer than the water they have to drink. You know, being we just went to Africa a couple of years ago, I can attest that's really true, and I wouldn't have thought of that. But thank you for the visual. <laughs> you know, it, it's 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 a simple things. You know, we have clean air, we have free air, we have freedom, we have freedom of expression, we have freedom of speech. It, it's it it's so free. Everything is free. We have the free stuff. You know, I, I, you know, whenever I go to the ocean, I say to myself, wow, I own this. This is my property. I own all the, the whales, the sharks, the dolphins, the fish in this ocean, and no one can fight me over it because I do. Eh? We That's don't... pretty cool. I never thought of that. Yeah, really nice. I tell you, I, I feel so rich, but, you know, we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't own anything. We rent it. We rent these bodies. We rent the things that we have. We don't own anything. The only thing we own is what's inside us. Hmm. Yeah. Very valuable. So besides that, we're grateful for the gratitude be number one. What would be another thing that we can do? Um, you know, as human beings, we're meaning-making machines. So everything that happens, we make it mean something. So for me, losing all that money meant I was stupid I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I shouldn't be here. All of those things. And all that happened was I lost some paper. I never even okay. saw that paper. It was in a fictitious bank that I never saw, in a fictitious account that I could never touch. 
So as human beings, we're meaning-making machines. If my wife doesn't return my call, I make it mean she doesn't love me, she doesn't care for me, she doesn't respect me. And all that really happened, the truth is, she did not call me back. So if we right. separate the meaning from what actually happened, that will stop us getting into huge stories, because we, we, we all live in stories. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, I like that analogy because when I go back to not, not the story with your wife, but the story about the money is, I never thought of it that way. You know, I had gotten affected in the stock market where I had invested, I was working at MCI and invested all my 401k, my employee stock options, everything else into it. And it was incredible because I ended up having a seven digit account very early. And by the time I was 30, I was a millionaire. And it was funny how when they went bankrupt and they ended up, they became WorldCom, they went bankrupt, I felt like I lost it. And the truth is, I always said that it was never my money because I wouldn't touch it. I always said it was for my future, my retirement and everything else. But when they went bankrupt, I literally turned myself off for two months thinking I just was broke and I had nothing. Yet I was never touching it anyway. It was intended for, you know, 30 years later, but yet my association and how I internalized it was totally like I lost everything and, and I had to start over. So it totally is an attachment. I could hear it and see it. And even the analogy you gave was so true. I, I played out that game. And, and do you know why people want money in the bank? Do I know why they do? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, why no, do they why want do uh, well, I believe it's for security, so if you need it, it's there. It, it is, but then if you ask what, what is it that, that the security gives you, and they'll tell you one answer, it's a feeling. They feel differently. They feel safer. So the reason we want money, the reason we have a relationship, the reason we have a meal is for a feeling. Everything that we do is for a feeling. So when you have $2 million in the bank, you feel good, you feel safe, you feel secure, correct? Absolutely. Now, imagine you could generate that feeling without having that money. How cool would that be? How much joy would that give you? How much power over your life would that give you? Well, then a lot of people wouldn't have to wait to be happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> You tell a four-year-old that they've got $60 million in the, in the bank, or you tell him you, you want some ice cream, I know what he'll choose. <laughs> Hello? If you've always wanted someone to connect with on your path to a happy, healthy you, I've got great news. In her number one best-selling book, Find to Fab, Seven Secrets of a Successful Woman's Journey Away from Depression, Disordered Eating, and Self-Sabotage, Lisa Lieberman Wang shares how you can experience your breakthrough just as she did. Start living an authentic life without blame, shame, or years of therapy. Buy now at findtofab.com. <clears throat> now that I have your attention, ladies, when you need help breaking through the barriers that weigh you down, turning to food is not going to help, and starving yourself along with ongoing feelings of helplessness and frustration will not help either. The cycle of self-sabotage, disordered eating, and stinking thinking has to stop, and there is no better way than with other smart, business-savvy women like you who are making the change with best-selling author, licensed master NLP practitioner, and trusted guide, Lisa Lieberman Wang of Fine2Fab.com. Lisa will help you get that breakthrough you've been waiting for. Go to Fine2Fabshow.com right now for all the details of the life-changing 10-week transformational program and the special listener's promotion. It's time to turn your life from feeling fine to being fab, fabulous, awesome, beautiful. Go to Fine2Fabshow.com now. Welcome back. We were just talking with Anil. We were talking about, can you imagine if you could just be happy now and you didn't have to wait to the point of having millions in the bank or having the security that you're looking for? 
How cool would that be? So, no, why don't you give us some exercises and how to, to make that barometer or that thermostat go up immediately to feel it immediately? Well, focus or uh, think of a great moment in your life, a happy moment. So, um, Lisa, think of a happy moment in your life right now. Okay. Okay, what, would, what is it? What is it? Oh, marrying my husband. Okay, so if... For the rest of your life, that's the only thing you thought of. That is the only thought in your head. How happy would you be? Okay, that's kind of a loaded question. It depends on the day, but if I thought of the day, <laughs> it would be awesome. I feel great all the time. Yeah, and that's what you need to do. You you decided to generate that feeling and. Everything that we do is based on one discipline. If there's a one master discipline, that if you master this one discipline, you will master your life. And that discipline is awareness. From awareness, you get clarity. From clarity, you get focus. From focus, you get action. From action, you get results. And what we're all looking for, really, ultimately, is not happiness. Happiness is easily achieved. But what we're all looking for is fulfillment, which is much deeper. So... What you focus on is what you get. This muscle that you build gets stronger and stronger and stronger, but you have to have the awareness of what you're thinking, of what you're feeling. So, you, you know, you, and, and, and what would be some questions that people can ask themselves? I know I have my own rituals of what I do to make myself um, be in a positive state and see the best in things, but what would be some you would suggest? Okay, so one, one would be, say, uh, ask yourself this question. What is a happy thought I could have right now? What's great about this situation? What meaning do I put behind this and what actually happened? Little simple questions. By having that awareness, you can, you can apply whatever question is required at, at that particular time. You know, like people have road rage. So a, a car does something and they get upset. The question to ask is, hey, why am I upset? I'm upset because he did that. Why did he do that? Ah, what meaning am I being put to it? And is it worth me getting upset? Of course not. If I get upset, I'm going to be in a bad mood. I'm going to have high blood pressure. I'm going to get ill. How could I change my feeling? I could say, well, you know what? That was quite a nice move. <laughs> and be playful around it. You know, it's, right. a, it's not what happens in life. It's, it's what you make of it and who you become. Yes, and I, I think of it as whether we respond or react. And for me, my favorite question is what's good about this? So yeah. no matter what, what happens, it's, it's what's good about this. Because I know that in hindsight, I'll find something. So I might as well find it out today. It makes it so much easier to feel better now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I had, yeah, I had a, a client who had called me in total distress and found out her daughter was pregnant and un unwed and was like devastated. Like this was, I said, what are you more upset about that? She didn't follow your plan or hers. And, she realized that she was upset because her fairy tale said you get married, you have children, and so forth. But, and we took her through a quick process, all of two minutes. And I said, well, are you going to love this baby? She says, yeah. And I said, and, and what's it going to be like having this baby? And she's like, of course, she's gonna, it's her grandchild. It's going to be the most important thing in the world to her because this is family is important. And I said, well, imagine if you could just feel that way right now and not have to go through this devastation of feeling bad. And literally... It was so incredible. Within 10 minutes, what she would have spent nine months being angry about, you know, she was able to release and just be happy in the process. And all I've heard for the last couple of months is what they're doing for this baby before the baby even gets here. So it's, it is such a gift to be able to change our thinking and, and change the meaning that we give something and just choose to be happy now, right? Uh, absolutely. Um... You know, let me give uh, your, your listeners a great exercise. If, you, if you've got kids or you've got a husband or a spouse, whenever they get back from school, or whenever they get back from work, ask them this question, okay? And this is such a great question. Ask them this. What was great about today? 
You know, when you ask a question like that, you have to answer it. You can't say, well, nothing. You've got to answer it. So, well, you know, what was, you know, I, I, I remember part of it that was great. Oh, that was great. Imagine the kids. They all light up. Absolutely. And they'll start looking for things that are great versus to share what's wrong. They'll get yep. conditioned to be able to see the, the better things that are in their lives right now. It's very powerful. And it's, again, it's a muscle. And then you start looking for things that are great. That, that's what I do. I, 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 st I look around for great people. I look around for great conversation. I look around for ways I can compliment people. And, and it's so much fun. It, it absolutely is. What would you tell people to do if they have relationships with people that do not charge them up and make them feel great and, and situations keep them there? I know you speak about it in, in your teachings, but why don't you give some wisdom at this point too? Well, the, the secret to a relationship is communication, authentic communication. Talk to your spouse. And if, if the reason your spouse may not be feeling so caring and loving towards you is because they don't feel loved or att attended to. So this is what my wife does. You know, I remember a time I, I wanted to leave the house and she threw more love at me and threw more love at me and more love at me. I thought, man, I, I can't take this. I, I can't leave. I got to stay here. You know, she's not going to let me go. So, you know, if, if, if you throw more love, if you make your partner number one, if you serve them, you will benefit, they will benefit. And remember one thing, men usually value respect over love. Women normally value love over respect. So respect your man, love your woman. Ask them, what is it I have to do to make you feel more loved? What is it I have to do to make you feel more respected? How can I make you feel different? How can I serve you? By having that authentic communication, you get to the answer really quickly without having to guess. Yeah, and you, you just made a, you made a good point too, is that when it comes to masculine and feminine in the different relationships, a lot of times we think that they want the same thing and understanding that the needs are different. Absolutely. I mean, the conversation I had with my wife is say, honey, look, recently I haven't felt respected by you. She said, oh, I'm sorry. And she said, what would you like me to do? I said, look, it's real simple. Just say thank you. I appreciate you. I love what you do. You do a great job. You change people's lives. And she said, is that all? I said, yeah, that's all. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm really vain. But it's, it, it just makes a difference to me. Because I, I, yeah, I value her more than anything. And when she says it, I feel so great. And she said, but there are only words. I said, honey, it doesn't matter. It makes me feel good. So if it makes me feel good, whether I have that vanity or not, just let it go and give it to me. And then obviously <laughs> I, I reciprocated. What is it I have to do for you? She says, honey, you just spend five minutes with me. Just be present with me. Have a cup of tea with me. Just look at me. And I said, is that all? She said, yeah, that's all. It's really very simple. But you have to target to where it needs to get to. You have to be, you got to have that awareness. And I think the other piece is, as well as the awareness, you have to want to make that change and make that, and make, give that attention because obviously it wouldn't work if you didn't. You know, if say there are people, and I know this more often than not, unfortunately, there are people who have others in their lives that they've been enabling and holding on to just because of what they're getting from it or they think they need to. You know, and that does not breed happiness. So what would you do? And we only have a couple of minutes left. So what would be something you'd share with those people that, you know, might need to cut ties or change relationships or make some big, big decisions here? Well, you know, that, that's really a tough one. And it's, it's a tough choice. But bring awareness to your relationship and look at, who you're being in it? How do you show up? Is your partner serving you? Is, is he or she really being the partner you dreamed of? Or are you settling? And what's stopping you from leaving? Is it the fear of being alone? Is it the fear of failure? So really, you have to throw awareness. But communication will help. Communication with yourself. Have that authentic communication with yourself. And ask yourself, is this the right relationship? 
Am I settling? What's missing? What do I need to change? What needs to change? So there's a lot of factors involved, but it stems from awareness. Awareness of who you're being, how you're showing up, what's missing, what's not missing. And, you know, it's a funny thing the other day. I was in my seminar and, you know, a lot of people there and I said, guys, I have to share something. I've been cheating on my wife. And, you know, my wife looked up, my, my daughter was about to stand up and jump at me. And I and they, and they said, what do you mean? I said, look, there are times in my relationship I don't, I hold back my love for my wife because I just can't be bothered. And that to me is cheating on her because that's the standard I set. And I don't have to have a physical love affair or relationship with someone else. By the fact that I'm withholding some love means I'm cheating on her. Have a look. Is, is the reason your relationship is not as good as it should be is because you're withholding love from your partner. You know, I, are you withholding it because you're not getting it? It doesn't work that way. You have to give, 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 give and give. And if, if that doesn't work, you have to look at whether you still should be in that relationship. But you, you shouldn't give in order to get back. Just give for the sake of giving. That's what babies do. That's what children do. They give love. They are candles. They light a thousand candles without diminishing their love. So by the fact you're giving love doesn't diminish your ability to give love, but it increases your capacity to give love and be loved. You know, and, and that's beautiful, and that's the truth, unfortunately, and there are a lot of give and takes and, un, and unhappy relationships for those reasons. And, and you know, how would um, people find you and be able to be in contact with you in the future for different things that you'll be doing? I want to make sure they have that information. Uh, the, the best way is through my website. You'll find a lot of uh, really motivational, inspiration, and unique content on there. And, and there's a private member's site on there, which is absolutely free, where you have access to a lot of my videos. And that website is Anil, A-N-I-L, Gupta, G-U-P-T-A, inspires.com. Anil Gupta, inspires.com. It, it's really beautiful content. And, and w what I say to people is there's no competition in self-empowerment. Whatever I have, use it, abuse it. I, I have no problem with that because if you save one person's life, if you make a difference to one person's life, it's worth it. Share the knowledge, share the gift, share the love. And we look forward to doing that. And all the information that we shared will be on my website at www.findtofab.com and we'll make sure we have your address there as well. And I know you're incredible and I thank you so much for joining us on this radio show today and, and be able to share your wealth of wisdom and knowledge. And if people want to be able to get your book, I know that they can get it on Amazon.com as well as your site. So be, be, be sure to go and check out immediate happiness and I think we shall start that too and again thank you remember guys you can text and be part of this community by texting the keyword find to fab to 90210 join us every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and remember you're fab you're already fabulous awesome beautiful have an outstanding day thanks sweetheart thank you so much I enjoyed that it was great thanks Tell me if this sounds like you. You're a woman, you're successful, but aren't quite comfortable with yourself. Perhaps you struggle with depression, eating disorders, or some form of self-sabotage. You've tried diets and programs, self-help, psychiatrists, even Overeaters Anonymous, and you're still looking for the answer. Well, get your answer today. Go to findtofabshow.com. That's F-I-N-E-T-O-F-A-B-show.com. When I see